Episode number 20, know what you want and stop talking yourself out of it. Hi, welcome back. It may sound like this episode is about setting goals, but I want to take it a little bit deeper, if I may say. I notice that sometimes we think that we know what we want, but we are talking ourselves out of it in a very subtle way. And first of all, we are not making this 100% commitment to our desires. In some cases, we don't even know what we want. We are completely lost. We are afraid to claim what we want. And when I'm talking about those goals, it actually can be anything. It could be uh, goals in healing. You want to heal something in your body. You want to lose weight. You want to be more creative. You want to write a book. You want to feel better. You may as well have uh, material financial goals. So whatever it is, this will apply. In the first part of this podcast, I will talk about how to know what you want, why we don't completely commit to those goals. And in the second part, I will talk about the ways we talk ourselves out of the goals. And no, these are not just excuses. This is something different. You may think that you want something, but there is something inside of you that it's hard to catch that is subconscious that gets in a way. Sometimes those are unmet emotional needs, relationship issues, or the way you see yourself and the world around you. The way you believe things are. And those limiting beliefs are hard to catch because they truly feel like they are the truth. They are the reflection of reality. Everything that I'm sharing with you on the podcast is reflection of real life, real experiences, either my own, the people I work with, the people I talk to. And this particular problem does not apply only to people who are kind of ADD, maybe creative, maybe not really focused. Their mind is going in 17 different directions, just like mine. But even if that is you, it's okay because there are ways to create focus, to train yourself to focus more and generate that inner power to go after what you want. But it also happens to people who have a history of really great achievements. They sometimes also don't connect with their goals for a period of time. Do you know what you want or you don't? Maybe you are kind of floating in life right now. I remember about 17 years ago, I was not in very good place. I printed this worksheet from the Success Magazine and I started filling it out. Maybe it was 10 pages. It was about choosing the direction for this year, annual goals and 10-year goals, maybe even five-year goals. When I saw the questions, I started crying and I don't cry that easily. Anyway, I didn't know what to say. The answers were not in my brain. I did not connect with words like happy and fulfilled. And even if I knew what would make me happy and fulfilled, I blocked it because the next thought that showed up in my mind after I thought that I know what I want was, who cares? How is it going to happen anyway? And when? In 100 years? How are we going to do this? It was pretty hard, but then I was depressed that I can say that it didn't take 100 years for me to feel happy and fulfilled. So there is hope if you are in the same place. Why you may not know what you want. I also noticed that people don't know what they want specifically when they come to a hypnotherapy session. On the first consult, actually, this is what happens. I ask questions and the person will tell me everything that they don't want. They are not happy with a part of their life. They are not happy with their bad habits or their skills. And they want a hypnotherapist to help them improve it. So I'm asking questions. And this is how it looks like. On one side of paper... I write down everything that they don't want. And on the other side of paper, I leave room for, for answers to questions 
So what do you want? Tell me how do you imagine the results? If there was a perfect outcome from our work together, how will it look like? And usually there are two or three words that are positive. I will be happier. I will feel more empowered. I will feel in control. So I need to guide them to open their mind to positive possibility, a positive solution, to open their imagination to what may happen. But when you are really suffering, when you already know inside and out your struggle, then you have practiced that struggle, you have practiced that mindset and those feelings for so long that this is your second nature. When I want to push you to imagine that positive outcome, of course, you struggle with it. You have not practiced that yet. So usually it takes a couple of sessions uh, and the inner work before the person connects to that greater possibility, better, more positive feelings and doing better in this part of life they are working on. You see, it's not that easy when sometimes you are asked to imagine your future self, your future life. Uh, there is this disconnect because you don't believe that this is true, that this can be true. So the key here is to take one little step at a time. Don't go from unhappy to happy. Your first goal may be to go from unhappy to hopeful and then from hopeful to optimistic. And then from optimistic to empowered. But I bet there will be more little steps in between. One way of figuring out what you want would be to take those little steps. Open yourself to some positive possibility and take actions towards it. And do not get discouraged if the universe is testing you. This is one way you change it. You hire somebody who will help you with the area of life you struggle with. Through this mental and emotional work, you will open up to new possibilities. You will test it in between the sessions in real life. You will realize that life and this part of life can be much better just because you did the inner work. The second exercise is uh, something you do on your own. It's through a method of meditative journaling. You can create your own little awakenings without the help of anyone else. So the first thing that you need to do when you get your journal out is get into a better mindset. Don't do it when you feel deprived, jealous, or you feel self-pity. Don't do it after you compare yourself with other people to your disadvantage. Because this is when you hear your ego. First, change your emotional state. Get quiet. Silence is essential. Intend to let go of the illusions of limitation. Let go of the scarcity thinking. Be here and now, just as you would in meditation or in prayer. Your soul speaks to you in silence. Once you do this, pick one area of your life that you want to change. Two, write what you don't want and you don't like on one side of paper. Three, get silence and open up to what you want, what could be yours. Then, watch your mind, your judgments and emotions that arise after new ideas come to your mind and to your heart. Five, let go of when and how it happens. You do not have to plan it all in advance. You simply can invite in that possibility, that image. Six, rewrite this list over weeks and months until it feels true to you. That means you will need to come back to this list over and over. It takes time, especially after a period of time when you were undecided. Even if you work with a coach on this, it will be transforming over months. And later on, even after you do this focused work on what you truly want, it will evolve again. Let's move on to the part when we are discussing why you don't commit 100% to your goals. Number one. 
you don't believe it will happen. You don't believe you will make it happen. You don't believe that you have something within you to make it happen. If that is you, two solutions here. One, make sure that the goal is actually believable. Make it perhaps a little bit smaller, but still exciting. Let me give you an example from weight loss. If you don't believe that you can lose 100 pounds, if you have that much to lose, do you believe that you can lose two pounds, five pounds? If yes, make those smaller goals. It will be much easier for you to believe it. The second solution here is, uh, did you know that you can actually train your belief muscle? You can believe stronger in something. Now, many people don't want to do this because they are afraid of failure. They are afraid that they will believe and it will not happen. You only will be disappointed if you stop working on the goal and you can always move the deadline. So I would say that this concept of belief stronger is one of the most frustrating areas of coaching. It's hard to explain it, but I know for sure that you can generate that belief within you. But isn't it strange that sometimes we are afraid to believe something because ooh, we may be disappointed in the end? That disappointment is not really such a big price to pay if another side effect, side benefit of that belief will be you will get somewhere, you will achieve something on the way to that bigger goal. The second reason why you may not be committing 100% to your goals is that well, you just don't want to work that hard. If that's you, at least be honest with yourself. You don't want to work that hard. I can understand this. But then check with your mission and with your values. Take yourself to the end of your life and look at yourself from the perspective of the end of your life and check, is this really true? that you don't want to work that hard, isn't that goal worth it to generate a little bit more energy within you? The third reason why we don't commit to our goals is that those goals are not even yours. They are not ours. We were told that we should have those goals, but they are really goals of other people in the society, other people pushing their goals on us, but we don't really want to achieve those goals. They are not exciting in any way. It's just a waste of energy because your life's purpose, your potential is simply taking you somewhere else. Sometimes also this will be the goals of your ego, but not goals of your soul. And the fourth reason why you may not be connecting completely with your goals, not committing to them, is that you are afraid of failure. Failure is strange because on one hand, it's an illusion. You and I failed many, many times in life, in a lot of different things. I could be failing right now. My goal is to explain as clearly as possible different concepts. Today, I'm talking about the idea that we are not committing to our goals for different reasons that are not really valid. And then we talk ourselves out of what we want for reasons that are also not valid. And I want us to pay attention to those thoughts that we have that lead us away from what we want, just so we recommit to our goals. But am I succeeding? I have no idea, unless you tell me that I explained myself clearly. I think that we really are afraid of what comes after failure, the feelings that come with failure, the feeling of disappointment, disappointing other people, embarrassment, shame, a sense of loss, and the sense that you wasted energy on something and it didn't happen. But the ultimate failure is only when you give up on trying. Nothing worthwhile is ever created in one try. If you are afraid of those negative feelings, because yes, they are painful, please know that you can't just get stuck in them. Feelings move. They will flow through you like a wave. 
If you are afraid of being stuck in those negative feelings, please know that it is not happening on its own. You can let go of those negative feelings. Maybe you can even train your mind in a way that you will not feel those negative feelings for longer than a few seconds. People who get stuck in negative emotions are simply creating their identity around the failure. They start believing that they will always fail and this is the end. They are not going to race above this failure. If you hear yourself, there is something inherently wrong with me because I failed, then you start creating this dense energy around this failure. You will keep yourself from trying. But what if you change that belief, you turn it around, I failed at this, but that's normal because every single person that tried to achieve this goal had these failures along the way before they were good at something. Even in dating, right? You don't expect to find your spouse on the first date. You may need to go on many dates. So are the other dates a failure? No, there are simply necessary steps to meet the person that is right for you. And I probably don't have to explain to you how it works in art. We have to put a lot of hours of work, hundreds of hours of work into developing our talent in order to be really good at what we do. Now let's move on to the next section of this podcast, which is... What are the ways we talk ourselves out of our goals? But first, a story about a woman who did not talk herself out of what she wanted. So there was a woman who was divorced in her 50s. And soon after, she, she decided that she wants to find a job, even though she didn't work in 20, 30 years. And she wants to find a new relationship. When she looked for her job, she created a list of what was important for her in that job. And then she went on a lot of different interviews. One job offered her low pay, but she could start right away. Another job offered her more or less okay pay, but then she would have to drive too far. And she could have said, oh, I better grab this opportunity because who else will hire me? But no, she knew that she wants to have a short drive to work, what she wants to make. And soon she got the job that she wanted because she believed that she can have it. Then she decided she wants to have a new relationship. She went on multiple dates with multiple people and she could have a relationship. She could have started a relationship, but there were red flags and compromises. And she decided, no, I'm not wasting any more of my time on relationships that are not what I really want. And soon she found somebody who is perfect for her. When she decided to say no to those compromised relationships, she showed to the universe that she is serious about getting what she wants, and she has it. The first way we talk ourselves out of what we want is by believing that we don't deserve it. This is an example of scarcity thinking. And it's very hard to talk ourselves out of this one using logic. Because how do you explain logically that one person has something and the other one doesn't? Yes, very often you can explain it, why somebody has something and the other one doesn't. But sometimes we are talking about stuff that has nothing to do with working for it. One way to handle it is simply work for it. You don't have to ever think about deserving something or not. Simply work for it. That will put you to action. That will make you see that you are actually in control of having it. Another way is to simply change your energy vibration. Very often things come to me just because I started thinking more positively about something and started feeling better feelings about something. And then things just manifest in my life and I didn't do a thing. I only worked with my mind. I can tell you it happened many, many times. I just wonder why can't I do it with everything? People have certain things because of their karma. Maybe they worked for it. 20 years ago, 
or in the previous life. And that's why they have it. I like to address this kind of mysterious excuses in hypnotherapy. So sometimes it would be good to see what is hiding underneath. I don't know if I deserve to drive on those nice highways here because I didn't build them. Well, maybe I paid taxes, but not that much. I don't know if I deserved to participate in this beauty of nature, for example, in Sedona, because I didn't create it. I am just here as a human. And you are here as a human who receives so much, even though you didn't work for it and you didn't pay for it. It's just here for us to enjoy. The second way we talk ourselves out of what we want is thinking that this is selfish. So again, what is about the scarcity mindset? Maybe you are thinking about all the people who don't have what you could easily have, but you reject it because you think it's selfish. You may be thinking about people you have nothing to do with, you don't even know personally, and you reject something just because those people don't have it. People even deny themselves feeling good because when they are working on themselves, on their so-called luxury problems, they feel guilty about working on it because somebody else somewhere out there doesn't have that luxury. But you feeling bad is not helping that person. In fact, it's the opposite way. If you really care about those people, then it will help you when you feel better, you feel more empowered. And from that place, you can really help them. Another way we talk ourselves out of what we want is by not recognizing that we have some conflicting beliefs. You may want something and at the same time, you know that you will have to give up certain things. One way of handling it is in parts therapy, inner conflict resolution hypnotherapy. Very often a person will discover a voice inside their head they even didn't know they have. You may be thinking that you are going to give up something important. For example, you want to change something in your life, but you think that you will make less money if you do. That's an example of all or nothing thinking. All or nothing thinking is, I want that, but I know that I will have to lose that. The remedy to all or nothing thinking is nuanced thinking. What if there is a way of doing this and that? The key word is and. I want this and that. I want to do this and keep that. So as soon as you combine those two ideas, wanting this and that, your brain will start looking for proof that you can actually create that, that you can have it. All or nothing thinking is very black and white. You simply see only two possibilities, while there are multiple possibilities. I know that people say, you can't eat a cake and have it too, but you know what? You can eat a cake and there's always another cake. Another way we talk ourselves out of what we want is more complex because it is about relationships. People sometimes have bullies in their life uh, that are their family members or friends. So I would question, are those really friends? Maybe you had that relationship in the past that if you were to look better, make better money, drive a better car, wear better clothes, the other person would be upset and they will bully you and they will start talking you out of what you have, making you feel bad. But I don't know if there's any point of keeping those people around. But if this is your family, then you have to make some important decisions or simply have conversation with them, maybe with the help of family therapist. So you see all the reasons we talk ourselves out of what we want are simply about changing our mind, changing mindset, sometimes changing relationships. But those reasons are not set in stone. You can absolutely create change, whether through therapy, coaching, hypnotherapy. And you know what? Even if those things are not available to you, you can have your own inner awakening and decide that you are going to go after what you want 
And first, you are going to clarify with yourself what it really is. And if you are enjoying this podcast, if it's helpful to you in any way, I would appreciate if you could rate it wherever you listen to this podcast. Thank you for being here. Have a fabulous week.